Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Um, this morning, we just glad to see everybody. How are everybody doing this morning? Good, 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 good. Well, it's fourth Sunday, Fellowship Sunday. Fellowship means what? Chicken. No, it don't. <laughs> it does and it don't, right? It does and it doesn't. Amen. We thank God for the chicken, but we thank God for the fellowship. So today will be a special day. We'll we'll kind of try to keep things moving um, so we can get to our time of fellowship. And then during our time of fellowship, we'll be talking about being born again um, because this is a church that believes in discipleship. Amen? Amen. The 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 the, the um, value of discipleship is that it means that everybody is growing, right? Everybody is growing. We're going somewhere. Church can become circular if uh, if there's no no direct path in which we travel, and so discipleship is that leading. Have you ever been on a job where um, you just come on a job? They hire you and uh, put you in a job doing some menial tasks, putting the widgets in the box, and then no one ever helps you to see how you can grow. Is that a, is that a good place to be? Nobody wants to be in a place, we, we used to call it a glass ceiling. You can see that there's something up there, but there's no way for you to get to it, amen? That's, that's church without discipleship, amen? Church without discipleship, is a is a is glass is a glass ceiling where you see folks operating and doing stuff at a higher level but there's no way for you to get to it amen oh i ain't getting no amens i'm gonna I'm say amen for you because maybe you don't know i'm telling you that that's what it is and so this this model that we have of discipleship is so that you might be able to continue to grow into what God called you to be. Amen? Every one of us have a special reason why God made us. God is so big and so intricate that you are not lost in the midst of this mass of people on the earth. You may think that you are sometimes. You may think God is, he see him and he see her, but he don't see me. But God sees you. Amen? And sometimes he allows get into some situations where you have to realize that only it could have been him that got you out. Amen. For you to really realize that God sees you. But 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 this model of church that we have here is one that we believe comes directly from the scriptures. Jesus Christ came to the earth and he wasn't he wasn't a crowd pleaser. He wasn't a person who. Uh, came to to gather great crowds, even though he gathered great crowds. He gathered crowds of thousands with the ministry, the teaching that he had, with the power that he possessed and he displayed, he gathered thousands. But he never took advantage of that. He never said, hey, what y'all think we can do? We got these thousands. How much you think we can make and how much you think we could build with these thousands? He never saw that as something that was... Uh, advantageous to him. As a matter of fact, in the book of in the book of uh, John, I'll read something for you quickly. Um, John, the second chapter. Um, I say it quickly. <laughs> Here's what. All right. In the second chapter of John, uh, this is after Jesus had turned the water to wine and he had began to do, he had done his first miracle and he had began to, um, to cause a stir. He went to Jerusalem and to the temple and he uh, whipped out all the folks there turning over the tables with the money changers 
And then he began to proceed to walk around and do miracles in the midst of the people. Amen. So he had a pretty busy, you know, couple of days there, right? And, and so this stir, uh, people were wondering, what is this stir? And people began to say something new is going on. You know, we like new stuff, right? And so they saw something new, something exciting, something that may be leading to something uh, greater. And so people began to attract themselves to Jesus. And, and, and know this, that as God begins to do things in your life, people are going to be attracted to what they see. People are going to be attracted. Some of you, if you're a single woman, men are going to be attracted to you because of what God's doing in your life. Amen? If you're a single man, women are going to be attracted to you because of what God is doing in your life. Uh, as you begin, as God began to do things in your life, uh, friends who, who had, you know, kind of left you alone, they'll start calling again. People start seeing you prosper. People began to see you looking good, doing good, talking well. And so people will be attracted to it. But you need to understand something about Jesus. Listen, look, look what Jesus understood that we may need to understand. It says, in verse 23, it says, during the time, oh, I'm in, ma in the message. Let me go back to a, something more general. Let's go to the New King James um, first. The New King James says, now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, during the feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs which he did, but Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew all men and he didn't need anyone to tell him what was in the hearts of men. Amen. Um, the message says that during the time of the feast, those days of the Passover, many people noticed the signs he was displaying. And seeing, they pointed straight to God and trusted their lives to him. But Jesus didn't entrust his life to them. He knew them inside and out, knew how untrustworthy they were. He didn't need any help seeing right through them. Amen? Now, now watch this. So there's, a, there's something that we need to understand about Jesus. He knows what's going on in the human condition. He knows about the issues that we have with the flesh. The flesh is not your body. Okay? Even though the flesh works through your body, the flesh is the nature which your body uses to determine how it's going to ad adapt to this life. A spiritual person who's walking in the spirit adapts to this life through the, the, the ways of the spirit. Joy, love, peace, long-suffering. This is how a spiritual person adapts to this life. The nature of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, meekness. So, so when you see somebody walking in the spirit, you'll see them adapting themselves to the world. So somebody cusses them out, and they pray for them. Somebody wants to hurt them, and they pray for them. Somebody betrays them, and they turn right around and remain friends with them and say, guess what, I still believe that God has a plan for your life. This is the way of the spirit. It's long-suffering, kind, gentle, meek. Now, but the flesh in us adapts to this world according to the needs of the body, the desire, the whims, shall we say, of the body. The body always wants to be comforted. The body always wants to be patted. Am I right about this now? So, so, so the, the flesh, the nature of the flesh, which came to man after the spirit left him, after God separated himself from man, God said, you shall surely die, which means you're no longer connected to me. And you're going, because you're not connected to the source of power, then you shall die like a battery in a phone. Take it off the charger, it's going to last a while, and it's going to what? It's going to die. Now, so watch this. So, but the flesh said this. I need something to take care of me now that God has separated himself. So the flesh created a nature for himself, which we call the flesh. So the flesh takes care of what? 
the flesh. He's also called the self who takes care of who? Himself, right? Self is always going to be what? Selfishness. He has many names. It's called flesh, self, human nature, sin nature, uh, the old man, now that there is a new man that is on, on, on the scene. And so all of these refer to the one thing that we all share because of sin. It's the human nature. Now, we have a tendency of saying, you know, I'm just human. Don't, 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 don't look at me like that. I'm just, I'm human. I didn't mean to cheat you. I'm human. I didn't mean to go off on you like that. I'm what? And so, true, a truer statement hadn't been made. But it doesn't mean that God looks at it in that same way. God looks at the human nature and says, I have to deal with it. And so he sent his son to deal with it, right? And so when Jesus made this statement, I'm making one point here. When Jesus made this statement, he says, he didn't entrust himself. Even though they entrusted their lives to him, he didn't entrust himself to them. Amen? It says that uh, in the, in the like again in the King James, it says he didn't commit himself because he knew what was in man and didn't in need anyone to testify to him what was in man. So when Jesus came, he fully well knew the condition of human beings. And part of your discipleship is that you may know the condition of human beings. All right. The re you, you may have said, well, I went through a discipleship class at this church and that church and that church, but I can just about with 90 percent accuracy tell you what they did not teach you was the condition of human beings. They didn't talk to you about the flesh. They didn't talk to you about the self life because I've been in church a long time from Maine to Mexico. I've been in every denomination just about there is fellowshiped and had a good time and, 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 was, and, was on, and was on my way to heaven. I thought at least. I assumed I was. I had no idea that Jesus came to deal with one particular issue, which is the flesh, the self. All the other issues that men had, God had allowed other men to deal with. He let Elijah bring man back from the dead. He let, he let Isaiah speak healing over Hezekiah, and he lived 15 extra years. So all these things that we say Jesus was about, other men had done. But there's one thing. Somebody say one thing. It's one thing that could not be dealt with, and it was that selfish nature. When he was talking to the rich young ruler, he told him to sell all he had and follow him. He told him it's one thing needful. And I always thought he meant that the one thing was getting rid of his money. But the one thing wasn't the money. The one thing was the flesh. So for the rich young ruler, in order for him to see his human nature for what it was, he needed to do what? Give up his money. You hear me? Oh, my goodness. For you, it may be different. He may, make, he may ask you to give up something else. He may ask you to deal with some other issue. But each one of us, his whole thing is for you to first realize the depravity of your human nature so that you may choose the nature of Christ. He said, this is the condemnation in John 3. Now, we're in John 2, right? I would love to go into John 3 right now, but this is not. This is a commercial, okay? <laughs> this is not my message. This is a commercial. But in John 3 and 19, he says this. And this is the condemnation. Well, let me read 18 for context. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Amen? The, the message says it this way. This is the crisis we're in. God light streamed into the world, but men and women everywhere ran for the darkness. They went for the darkness because they were not really interested in pleasing God. 
everyone who makes a practice of doing evil, addicted to denial and illusion, hates God's light and won't come near it, having a painful exposure. But anyone working and living in truth and reality welcomes God's light so that the work can be seen for the God work it is. Amen. So, so as our meditation this morning, um, I want us to think about your, your either your, your uh, willingness to be his disciple or your reluctance, your reluctance of being his disciple. Will you be his disciple? I remember when Jesus healed the blind man, and they came and said, tell us who, who healed you. How did you get your sight? You know? <laughs> and he said, he said, I don't know. <laughs> if I tell you, will you be his disciple? <laughs> so my question to you today is, will you be his disciple? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you today for your grace. We thank you, Lord, as we enter this service today, Father God, that you will help us, Lord, to gain our sight. Help us, Lord God, to see the way before us and walk in it. Father, for so long we've walked in circles, going nowhere. But now you've given us an understanding of a discipleship that leads us uh, further along the path that you have given us, a straight line that leads us from where we are to the celestial city, from where we are until glory with you from where we are to where you are. Jesus, you said, I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you may be also. Father, we know that this is the way. No one can come to you except by Jesus. Jesus says, I am the door. Anyone that come any other way is a thief and a robber. So right now we come to Jesus Christ, the door of the sheepfold, the great shepherd of the sheep. We come to him and we now ask, Lord, would you make us your disciple? Would you teach us your ways? Would you allow us to learn how to live a different type of life? Lord, take away our fear. Take away, take away our reluctance. Take away our presumption. And give us a heart today to follow you into the newness of life, into something we've never seen before, a place we've never been, a place where you are. And we thank you right now for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Um, again, I know it's fourth Sunday. We've got people trying to prepare food, and so we tend to be a little tardy this morning on fourth Sunday, so we're going to press on. Is that all right? Um, I'll ask Josh to come, and we're going to sing some worship unto the Lord. And then uh, we're going to also... I ask uh, Brother Fred to go ahead and see if anybody needs envelopes uh, for the offering. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. In the book of uh, Malachi, chapter 3, we get some instruction on giving. We had a good, God helped us last time we were together, but today we just want to read Malachi chapter 3. It says, uh, Verse 8, let me just read from the New King James. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Therefore you are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. 
if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour you out, excuse me, pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all the nations will call you blessed, for you will be a de delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. So God speaks to his people, Israel, and he says to them, Would you rob me? He said, Well, you have, because you stopped giving me your tithes and your offerings. So the tithe is a particular thing. If I have $100, then one tenth. I should set aside for the Lord. That's $10. Amen? If I have $45, one tenth, $4.50. Amen? Y'all got that? If I have $1,200, <laughs> one tenth, how much is that? Huh? $120. All right, now, is that simple enough? So uh, the tithe, start at the very basic basis of it, it's 10% of what God has provided for you. Now watch this. If God has not provided anything from you, then you don't have a tithe. Did you know that? You don't have a tithe. If God hadn't provided anything for you since the last time you came, since the last time you uh, came to the to worship Him, then you don't owe God a tithe. That's that's a, let's talk about the simplicity of it. So God gives asks you to give Him ten percent. Or He didn't even ask this. This is what our great 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 granddad Abraham said. Because in Christ, I'm Abraham's seed, and I'm an heir to a promise. Now, how many of you knew that you were heir to the same kingdom that Christ himself is ruler over? How many of you knew that? That he has made you an heir and a joint heir with Christ. So you have an inheritance. Somebody say, I have in Christ, in Christ. an inheritance. An inheritance. Now, if you're in Christ, then that means you have an inheritance, right? Now, so likewise, he says that if you have a part in this inheritance, then you also have a part in the, the, the promises of what was given between the two people. Okay? So this promise of an inheritance that Christ now came, it started with a man named Abraham. And God blessed Abraham, and he took care of Abraham so much so that when Abraham had an opportunity to take the wealth of five kingdoms, he didn't do it. Look at Genesis uh, 14. You'll see that, that these five kingdoms were, were, were raided. They lost everything, uh, and they could not overcome these other four kingdoms. And God allowed Abraham to go and take back everything that had been stolen from them. And so Abraham then was given an opportunity. They said, keep all of our stuff. Keep all our stuff. Just give us the people that we lost. Because what they really wanted Abraham to do is become their king. Because they said, this boy bad. But Abraham had another assignment. What was his assignment? To go where God tell him to go. <laughs> to go to a place he ain't never seen before. So, so in order to get there, he had to bypass all this that the world wanted to give him. Listen to me now. Good morning, sister. He had to bypass all of what the world wanted to give him in order to continue with God. I could preach that, but I ain't going to do that this morning. Okay. But now watch this. I want to talk to you about what we're we talking about right now. The tithe. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Keep, keep me on point. We're talking about the tithe. Everybody say the tithe. Now, so what happened was 
when he was on his way back, and when you get a chance, I want you to look at this in Genesis 14. When he was on his way back, this man met him called Melchizedek. He was the priest of Salem. He was a man, the Bible said, he had no beginning and no end. Am I right, Sister Shirley? He didn't, he didn't have no beginning and no end. He didn't, they, nobody know where he came from, and nobody know when he died. He was a special cat. And he came up to Jesus, and he said, I mean to Abraham, and he said, Blessed art thou, Abraham, and of all the men on, on the planet. And Abraham said, I came looking for to bless you. I want to I wanna do something to, for God. Would you receive my offering? And so he blessed him with a tithe of all he had. Somebody say 10%. Now, so, so what Abraham understood, that I hope we understand, is that everything that he had increased through, from the time he left. Skeet, watch this. Abraham left his inheritance that his father left him. His father left him some land. His father left him cattle, all this stuff. And God told him, leave all that and follow me. So by the time this happens, Abraham have now received more from God than what his daddy had left him. Listen to me now. And he said, now, I, 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 I see something going on here. And I, I, need to, I need to seal this deal with God. I need, I need to make sure God understands that I appreciate and understand what I've received from him. And I need to make an offering. So he said, I'm going to give God one-tenth of all the increase, somebody say increase, that I received from him. So, so a lot of people act like the tithe is stealing from them. They think that when, when we talk about the tithe that the preacher want to steal from or even God himself want to steal from them. But listen to me real carefully. The tithe is 10% of what God has increased you with. Amen? And if you have not been increased, how much do you owe God? Zero. If God hadn't increased you throughout your prayers, huh? Because you've been praying, even if you, even even the ones that say they don't really believe in God, they've been asking Him. When they get in the tight, they ask Him, and He come through. And so they've increased, and yet they hadn't brought Him anything out of what He increased them. All right. So the tithe is 10% of that increase. Now watch this. So, so Abraham, instead of him receiving something from them, he gave Melchizedek 10% of all he had. Now I ain't talking about 10% of all he had got from these kings now. He gave them all their stuff back. He said, God told me don't touch one shoelace of what you're going to get. So before he went down there, God promised him, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you to recover all that they have lost. But when you get it, don't you touch one shoelace. There's been a theme going on this morning from the songs all the way to the responsive reading, and we said it's doing what? Trusting God. Abraham trusted God. And we talked about this last week, right? The scripture that we were looking at in, in, uh, in Romans 10, it says, it said that who, who, how will they know who to trust, huh, unless you show them who to trust, right? So, so this is the thing, and I said this to you Wednesday, that until you can trust him, you can't lead nobody else to trust him. Amen? So God, here Abraham is. I want you to hear this story now. We could have gone into the scripture and read it, but I want you to just hear the story. This is the story that Abraham was, was a man who didn't even have an army. And kings who had armies could not win a battle against these four kings. But Abraham, with God on his side, amen, went down there, took back his nephew Lot and all the stuff that them folks had stolen. He brought it back, didn't touch one coin. Gave them everything back that they had been stolen. Instead of him getting something from them, he turned around and gave God 10% of what he already had. Watch this. And the king of kings came back and said, no, 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 no. You keep the money. No. He said, no. God told me don't touch one shoelace. Now, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you do want to turn, turn to 15. Turn to Genesis 15. I do want you to lay your eyes on this, because I say this all the time. 
I don't think y'all may not have really looked at it. Look at this. And I'm done. Genesis 15. Very crucial, crucial thing that, 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 that should help you in your faith. It says, after these things. Now, because everything I just told you happened in when? Genesis 14, right? You don't have to trust me. You can go look at it later. Everything I just told you happened in Genesis 14. In Genesis 15, it says, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, do not be afraid. Why was he afraid? Why would, why would, why would Abram be afraid? Hmm? He already whooped these kings. He should be feeling powerful, right? It's because of that human nature. You know what that human nature was saying to him, don't you? What you get? What, you, what did you get out of that? You could have had all that riches. You just walked away from it. You could have had all that money. You could have had all them wives. You could have had all them cattle. You could have had all that stuff. Somebody say stuff. And so God, knowing the human nature, we just saw that Jesus said he knew what was in man, right? Here God is. He said, I know what's going on in your heart, Abram. He said, fear not. Don't be afraid. God knows that for you to turn loose, the things of this world is going to bring fear into your heart. Amen? When he said one thing is needful and he tells you to turn loose something in this world, he know your heart going to begin to palpitate. You're going to be fearful. But this is what he said. He said, fear not. I am your shield and I am your exceedingly great reward. So what do you get, Abraham? God said, you get me. Oh, my God. You get me. And all the riches of any king in any kingdom, where did it come from? Huh? Anything you see on this earth, you look around, you look around, you look up, you look down. Everything came from him. And he said, don't fear. You get me. Oh, my God. If you can settle this issue in your heart, amen? Tired, ain't going to be no issue. Because you understand and you'll know that everything that you need, he got it. And he is yours. All I want, Lord, is an opportunity to glorify your name. I've lived my whole life for me. With the breath that I have left, with the life that I have left, Lord, I want to live for you. I want to live for you, Lord. Not I, but Christ. Let it be Christ living in me, Lord. Let it be Christ. Let it be Christ, Lord. Let it, let it be Christ that the people see, Lord. May my life be an example of your life. May, may my life be a place where your life can be exemplified. May my life be a place where people can touch you. Thank you, Lord, for taking out all the poison from my life, the corruption with your dear and blessed cross. be able, Lord God, to give you glory, that I might be able, Lord God, to, to have you, Lord God, be able to say that you delight on the inside of me, that you live your life on the inside of me, that the fire of the Holy Ghost is on the inside of me. We thank you, Lord God. We praise you, we magnify you, we lift your name.
May, may this service be a glory to your name, Lord. May you be glorified in all that we say and do. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord once again. To see my friends and loved ones and on this uh, fellowship <laughs> Sunday. You got your friend back there, Fred. <laughs> You're looking at who is that man, baby? Who is that man? <laughs> Praise the Lord. How everybody doing today? Blessed. Blessed. I'm blessed and fortunate. Got my nieces here today. Amen. Y'all stand up. Stand up, nieces. Let me show y'all off. Ain't they beautiful? Look at that. Look at it. Beautiful. Ain't that beautiful? Amen. I'm so thankful to have them with me today. Amen. Y'all can be seated. That's uh, my niece, uh, my daughter's, my daughter's daughter, Alexis, and uh, her two, her two beautiful, beautiful darlings. Amen. Aubrey and Kendall. Aubrey. Amen. And Kendall. Amen. And so we thank God for them. We thank God for everyone who's with us today. Um, we are um, also um, glad to have uh, Mother Man with us today. She she buried a brother on Friday, and uh, we thank God. Um, Mother Mildred, she pressed her way. Lord, she could barely walk. She pressed her way and came out uh, Friday and joined with us, and uh, we had a wonderful time. It was a good service. I didn't get to go to Golden Corral. Y'all didn't bring me no plate or nothing, though. Where my plate at? <laughs> and um, they went all out to, to Golden Corral afterwards, and um, beautiful family, godly family. And uh, God gave us a beautiful word. Brother Michael came out as well. Um, and uh, he's supposed to come out. That's his mama. He got to come. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Bro, don't look at him like that, man. He can share now. You got just enough of her to go around. <laughs> I'm in there too. You might well get over it. <laughs> we thank God. We thank God for their family. All right. So praise God. Um, listening. Amen. How many of you been improving your listening? Hey, man, I see some hands shot straight up. That means somebody is intentionally working on listening. Look at you. Oh, hey, baby girl. Now, uh, uh, one of our daughters, she, she got some tremendous awards. I just want to just acknowledge. This, this, I know it's probably others in here, too, but I just want to acknowledge our baby girl back there. Got some tremendous awards. Mama, stand up. Uh, somebody take the mic. Where your mic at, Fred? You're off, you're, you're off your game now. <laughs> uh, one of our, one of the young ladies that that um, is here with us, and I'm gonna let her tell you her name and everything. Oh, come on up here, come on, come on up here, baby girl. Can you talk? Can you tell us about it? Can you tell us about the awards you got at school? Well, no, I'll take that back. Leave that mic back there. Let Mama talk too, and then you come on up, though, baby girl. Come on up. Leave, give Mama the mic, and you're gonna use this one up here with me. Hurry up now. Get her the mic. Get her that mic. Oh, I done got myself in trouble here. Now, you come on up here with me so they can see you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, what, what grade are you in? Tell us your name. Azaria. Azaria. Okay. And what grade are you in? First. First grade. Amen. Amen. What school? Legacy Prep. Legacy Prep. Amen. Amen. Now, Mama, tell us about these awards she got. Mama was telling me I was so excited. <laughs> tell us about these awards that she got on uh, on the, on what, a week ago. Uh huh. Okay. The whole entire year, she um, has maintained all A's and B's. Amen. So, Amen. and then out of the entire school, she received the Perseverance Award. The Perseverance Award. Amen. 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 So we teaching our children even to persevere. Amen. Ain't that so? Christ will help you persevere. Amen. So we thank you. And uh, you ready to go to second grade now? Mm -hmm. Ready yes. to go second grade? Yes. Amen. Well, everybody stretch your hand toward this baby. We're going to pray she can do, continue to do well and do even more. Amen. Amen. Father God, we just thank you for what you're doing so far in her life. Father, help her to keep persevering in Christ. We pray that she will continue to make great grade, good grades and that she will continue, Lord God, to do things that please you. 
We thank you for your grace on her life and all of our children. May they all be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So, so when y'all be telling me stuff, I don't be, I don't be ignoring y'all. I be listening. Amen. All right. So, now, so we've been talking about listening. And evidently, baby girl been doing a good job of it because you don't get those kind of accolades at school without listening. And you say that you guys are improving your listening, and that's great. Um, we, last week, we had a, uh, a tremendous word that God started with us and, uh, in Romans chapter 10. Uh, and I don't really want to go too much back into that because it's a lot there that we covered already. But I do want to, to look at one thing there in uh, Romans 10 and verse 17. Somebody get it for me in the message? Romans 10 and 17. Do I want to leave this? Maybe so. All right. Romans 10 and 17 uh, in the message. Uh, Fred, get your, you, you, yeah, get your. All right, we need another mic over there, Josh. Uh, Summer has one. No, I need you to get it for me. Here, this side of the room. Forget to get this other side. Yes, the birthday girl got it right there. We had a wonderful time last night at Jamira O's birthday soiree. Amen. Amen. Folk, <laughs> folks, folks was all like they was in Hawaii and stuff. Where's somebody at? <laughs> in the back, back there. Sister Val was all in, y'all. She had a lay yes, on, and she was. had on some Hawaiian <laughs> gear, and she was ready. She was all in. Amen. So I thought I was in Hawaii when I walked in. Amen. 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 Folks had a great time. Amen. All right. But now, Romans 10, 17, message. It's 14 through 17. The all way right. To, okay. All right. We'll, stay, we'll take that. Romans 10, 14 through 17. But how can people call for help? If they don't know who to trust and how can they know who to trust if they haven't heard of the one who can be trusted and how can they hear if nobody tells them and how is anyone going to tell them unless someone is sent to do it that's why scripture exclaims a sight to take your breath away grand processions of people telling all the good things of God but not everybody is ready for this, ready to see and hear and act. Isaiah asked what we all ask at one time or another. Does anyone care, God? Is anyone listening and believing a word of it? The point is, before you trust, you have to listen. But unless God's word is preached, there's nothing to listen to. Amen. 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 Now, so in that little piece, I just want to for a minute talk about we, we, we lit Wednesday, and you have to go back. I think Wednesday's now up on YouTube. So I want to give a plug uh, to our media team, number one, uh, which is Summer. <laughs> and, and those who she, she's recruiting for the media team. She's got us now. We can take stuff off Facebook, putting it back again on. YouTube, uh, we some seven used to do that for us before he got ill, but uh, but he is he's he's uh, he's still on that team, but but just in on IR right now. Uh, but she did that, and we've gotten some tremendous response from things being on YouTube. So I uh, want to give a plug. Number one, I'm supposed to be saying uh, go to on, on those of you who are watching us on Facebook, go to the restore site page and like that page there's a link in the comments there's a link in the comments go to the restore site page and like that page we will eventually stop streaming from my page and we will be streaming from the restore site page and we will have it also uh, up on YouTube as quickly as possible all right so so please hear me um, if you if you one that catches this on YouTube I'm on Facebook you need to start liking the Restore site page, all streams will eventually come from there. Amen. Also, um, the one on YouTube, it's, we, we call it part four. It may have been part five, but anyway, 
uh, we are we going back and we're going to put up the other parts that led up to that and on listening and then you know there were other parts before that on this issue of reality this issue of listening came as a result of us talking about reality or what is real so 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 I know that that's a lot for y'all to keep up with so you really need to go back and look and see the journey that we've taken now but today um, this th these notes here are from Wednesday we were talking about reality what reality is it that you're living in because your listening will will uh, be different in each reality so listening we've talked about listening to the point that I believe you know that you need to listen you need to train your ear to listen you need to be intentional about your listening but now if you're listening and you're not in the right reality then you may be hearing a bunch of things that's confusing your ears and your mind because darkness is a place that you can exist and this ex reality over here is light. Now we, we explained this Wednesday so I don't have time to go back through that. But there's two realities that we will be talking about for the duration. Those realities are number one, the reality of darkness and the reality of light. How many of you know that darkness is real? Darkness is a very real thing. So, so darkness itself is a reality. And when people are struggling with, with life, most of the time it's because they find themselves struggling with the issues of darkness. Now, because darkness is the only reality that we've ever known before we came into Jesus, then darkness is familiar to us. So it's like somebody living without electricity. Amen? I know pe people that have lived without electricity for four or five years or more. And you ask them about it, and it's just become their what? Reality. And so they, they're used to stumbling around in the dark. They're used to reading by a candle, real candlelight. They, they're used to figuring things out in the dark. Amen? Amen? But for somebody else who never lived in that reality, it will be very difficult. Now, as I've gotten older and my eyesight has changed, as my eyesight has changed, I can't stand darkness. I'm talking about physical darkness now. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I can't stand I'd be like, why nobody got no lights on in here? I can't stand that. That just, ooh, I can't stand that. That just, it irritates me because I'm sitting, I try, you try to keep, go on functioning, but you really can't. You can't see, you're stumbling, you can't read, you can't tell what's going on. And so I can't see the remote. Somebody asked me, somebody asked me yesterday, every, I think that's the most, every remote should have a light on it. <laughs> but now, but now watch this. This issue, though, is because you are not used to operating in darkness physically. But now, that may not be the same. You may be a person who keep every light on, sleep with the night light on, and all of that physically, but have been walking in darkness spiritually for years. You may not know that you're walking in darkness. But the Bible tells us explicitly about this, and so we'll talk, we're going to get to that in just a second. But first, I want us to, to understand how that relates to what this scripture says. It says that, uh, she just read for us, it says, how can people call for help if they don't know who to trust? How can they know who to trust if they hadn't heard of the one that can be trusted? So in a spiritual realm, darkness and light are not about physical sight I can be blind and we did a did a thing Wednesday that I don't think I have time to do again I can be blind and make it safely to any destination if spiritually I have the right sight I can make it to where God wants me in life and have never seen the light of the sun because I have a guide who is giving me instruction the Bible says in the New King James or the King James, faith comes by what? Hearing. hearing. 
Now, then what is faith? If faith comes by hearing, what is faith? Faith is trust, and that's a part of faith, yes. Faith is made up of trust. Faith is what? Faith is direction. Very good, very good. Faith is direction. But what, is, what, is, what, do, you, what do I want you to say? Faith is what? Sight. Sight. Faith is sight. Clearly seeing. Faith. Mature faith is clearly seeing what the Lord is saying. Now, so, so mature faith is sight. Everybody say this with me. Mature faith is sight. Say it again. Mature faith is sight. That's why the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight, which means I can close my eyes and, and, and see more clearly than I can with them open. I can close my eyes and see more clearly than I can with them open. What is that? Why is that? Why is that? Huh? Yeah, but be more detailed. Why, why can I close my eyes and see more clearly than I can with them open? Huh? Well, you know I, you, you know I can't see physically with them closed. <laughs> Teacher. You... you. <laughs> No, 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 no. Stay with me. Now, now, now answer. So if, I, if I'm not talking about that, then what am I talking about? And why then? Why then? Wait, get this to the teacher. I'll get it to the teacher. She didn't got it. She stumbled into this one. <laughs> Thank right, you, so Lord, for the stumble. Let's deduct, let's deduct this. Okay. So now I've closed my eyes. Which means what? You can't physically see. I can't physically see. Mm -hmm. What happens then? Then you are seeing, but you have to trust God to get you through it. Okay, but let's be more scientific. Come on, come on, come on. Let your daughter help. I got you. Your other, your other senses become heightened. Come on. Here, you can listen. I'm come with on. you. Come on I'm now. with you. Okay. When I close my eyes, <laughs> my other senses become heightened. And since faith comes by what? When I close my natural eyes, I actually can see better right. with them closed. Because you can hear what he says. Because now I can focus. Oh, boy. And see, we go, y'all might think I'll be messing with folk, and you ought not do folk. But see, when I do this, we all get there together. Amen? Because see, because, see, it's not enough for you to nod your head at me. We got to get there. We got we to gotta make the steps to get to where I'm trying to get you to. So, so, so now, when she, when she had that aha moment, oh, I see it. I see it. I see it. Once you see it, then you can be it. It's different than you hear me. I heard Pastor Day say you can see better with your eyes closed and not have an idea what I'm talking about. But when you can see it, then you start doing like this. That's what he always say. He said, oh, when you start popping that finger, that's what Isaac said. Oh, Lord, I know we're going to be here a long time today. You popping that finger. <laughs> But when I pop in that finger, it's because I can what? I can see it. So I want you to visualize that when you close your eyes. See, when you really want to hear. Come on now, think about it. When you really want to hear, you close your eyes. When you really want to pray, what do you do? Because you want to hear God. You're trying to focus on him. Because everything you see becomes what? A distraction. And so now, watch this. So God is saying that in order for you to be able to understand how I operate, you got to walk by faith. And faith is sight. It's not blindness. A lot of times, I was taught that faith was blind. So blind faith, which means write a check whether or not the money in the bank or not. That's, that's what I was taught. I was taught, don't worry about whether the money in the bank, write a check. Now, you may not have been taught that. But I've been there. I'm telling you what I what I was what I was what I was taught indirectly, if not directly, was that that it doesn't matter whether or not you thought you had the money or not. It didn't matter that you already promised the folks you're gonna pay your bill on time. Here you now sit in church and they want you to give into this offering and they want you to throw caution to the wind. 
and give an offering to the, to the amount that they want you to give. When the Bible clearly says, let a man give as he has determined in his own heart. But see, all of this was because we had got out of control and flesh had taken over the church. But now we're coming back and we're being discipled now to, be, to, to see what God really is saying, right? And so one of the things we have to do is make the definitions clear. So the definition for faith is it is equivalent to what? Sight. Now, somebody said faith is trust because faith is made up of, com of components. Faith is not the same as believing, although believing is a part of faith. Say faith is not the same as trusting, although trusting is a part of faith. Faith is not the same as action, although action is a part of faith. So faith is believing, trusting, and acting upon what you believe. Amen? So all three of them have to be working for it to be called faith. But in order for that to happen, this scripture says, how can they call for help if they don't know who to trust? And how can they know, where am I? How can they call for help if they don't know who to trust? And how can they know who to trust if they haven't heard of the one who can be trusted? Haven't done what? Heard of him. You can't trust him until you what? Heard of him. So this issue of changing realities starts with what you what? Hear. Starts with what you hear. Until you hear, you can't see. Which means you're still in what? So you may think that, okay, I can't, no way I can be in doctors. I've been in church for 30 years. But until you can see what he's saying, you still wear. And so, so, so if I was to go back to one of my other drawings. Remember, I told you that this person here, who is a person, is also in darkness, right? This is the this is the man of the, the new man of God in the, in the light. This person is in darkness, and we said that from this position, God's word comes. This person starts to come to life. We see they were darkness. Scripture says, "You were once darkness." Find that for me, Jamir. You were once darkness. Um, now, but this person here was once Jamir the mic. She once she get that scripture. This person here once was what darkness. Now they now become light in the Lord. Now, because this person once was darkness, though, they heard the word of God, came into the heart. The heart is where the change takes place. This is why we were singing those songs, talking about what God needs to do in our heart, right? Lord, let it be in my heart. Because when, he, when, he, when, the, when the word of God comes, the first change takes place in the heart. What is the heart of man? The what? The control. The control center. Boy, I got some disciples in this place now. All right. <laughs> it is the control center of the man. The heart is the control center. It is not the physical heart. Again, we're not talking about physical. We're talking about spiritual. So the heart of man is the control center. Now, you may think that that's your brain, your mind, but it is not. The brain is a processor. It's a processor, okay? The control center is the heart. This is where you make decisions. This is the throne where the throne of your heart is. Somebody sits upon that throne. Amen? Who's, who, who started out on that throne? Sin? Self. Mr. Self, sitting upon the throne of your heart makes all the decisions for your life. So the heart is the control center. It is the place where everything is decided. So when the word of God comes, the first thing it has to do is dislodge Mr. Self from the throne of your heart. So I told you when, we, when I was sitting in, before the, in the commercial that I gave you before service, I said that the issue is that all the discipleship we've had in the past started with trying to, to tame an alligator. But you can't tame an alligator. So, so the problem with all the discipleship I received before now was that it didn't deal with the nature of who I was. 
as long as I had the nature of an alligator and your hand get close to my mouth, I'm going to be like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I ain't mean to bite your hand off, but I'm a what? I'm an alligator. You understand? So you can't tame an alligator. You can tie my mouth up. But as soon as my mouth get loose, I'm still biting hands and legs off, okay? Now, so, so, so all discipleship has to start first with dealing with what? The nature of man. So when the word of God comes, the first thing that it has to do is dislodge Mr. Self from the throne of your heart so that you might become a new creation. Amen? All right, you got that scripture for me? Ephesians 5 and 8. Ephesians 5 and 8. New King James. Hold on, we got two, three people want to go there with you. Take right. your time. Slow down a second. Ephesians 5 and 8. New King James. New King James. Go ahead. For you were once darkness, For but you now. you were once in the dark. Isn't that what it said? For well, you were once in the dark, right? No. Is that what it said? No. Is that what it said? For you were once in the dark. No. Oh, oh, you were once dark. Darkness. See it, see, see, it goes deeper than you were just in the darkness. It said you were once darkness. darkness. See, you yourself, according to God, were in his mind what? Darkness. darkness. Mm -hmm. See, this is the issue that we don't realize. We think, see, I thought that, that God just needed to clean me up a little bit. I, see, when God calls a little young boy at 14, and nobody teaches him about these things of his nature, then all he can think is, God really loved me. God really think I'm special. So I thought, uh, Royce, that God thought I was so special, all he want to do is just kind of dust me off, you know, clean me up, put some new clothes on me, give me something to ride in, and let me tell, tell people about him. See? So I was ready at 14. But nobody helped me. So I just said, well, whenever somebody helped me, I'm going to go. But right now, I'm going to go on and hang with my friends. So I learned how to do all kind of things, not realizing that the whole time God couldn't use me because I was what? Darkness. darkness. See, how can God use darkness to show people the light? And until you understand that you were once what? Darkness. Then you won't take this discipleship thing serious. You won't work. You won't try to change. You will think, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm better than all my friends. They on drugs. They robbing folks. They doing grand larceny. They doing all kind of stuff. I'm better than them, so I must be pretty good. All I need is once, once sooner or later, I'm going to go to church. God will clean me up, and I'll be on my way to heaven. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But you were once what? Dark. Darkness. Read again. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Now, so he says, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk different. Amen? Amen? Walk different. Walk different. You grope your way. The, the message says, you grope your way through that murk once, but no longer. You are out and open now. The bright light of Christ makes your way plain. So no more stumbling around. Go on. Get with it. The good, the right, the true. These are the actions appropriate for daylight hours. Figure out what will please Christ, then do it. So, so there's, a, there's a mandate. There's something that God is asking of this person. But until God has control of the control center. See, it doesn't matter what you hear. It only matters who has control of the control center. Right? Y'all will be watching, you'll be sitting, sitting there with the family, and everybody's saying, come on, we want to watch the game, we want to watch the game. And the person watching Family Feud. Do it matter that you want to watch the game? Nope. It only matter who got the remote. Because <laughs> you're not watching Family Feud <laughs> until somebody with the remote changed the channel. Am I right about it? 
And so God's word been coming into our ears. I don't care if it's been 30, 40, 50 years until you allow him to have the control center of your life, then nothing is going to change. Because you don't understand that you were once darkness. But now you're supposed to be light in the Lord. And he said when you become light, that it's going to change the way you act. Oh, my. What, what translation was that? That was King James, right? New King James. Read it one more time. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Walk as children of light. Now, now, if then he says in Romans, how can they know who to trust unless somebody tells them who can be trusted? then how many people are going to give up the familiar life that they had over here in darkness? How many people are going to give up this life to come into this life if they don't know who to trust? Not me. Now, how can you tell them really uh, without quivering, without jellyfishing, how can you tell them to leave this life and come to this life unless you've already trusted him to do the same thing yourself? It's not possible. Because in order for you to tell me and I look you in the eye that you can trust the Lord, you got to be trusting him yourself. A lot of time we don't understand why our ministry is not, it's not as strong. It's because it is a ministry of, uh, of uh, what do you call it, uh, when somebody, uh, just a helpline, you know, you just, they call in and you got a directory and you're reading off of it, you know. You say, well, I need help with my phone bill. Well, I got a number you can call. That's, that's, that's most of the ministry that most folk have. I got a number you can call. They say, well, what happened when you go down there? Well, I don't know, but when you go down there, they'll tell you. That's the ministry we say we have with Jesus Christ. And that, instead, of, instead, of them, instead of telling them, one thing I can tell you, I once was blind, but now I see. Huh? I once was darkness myself. Now I'm light in the Lord. So the issue with listening for us as it deals with our reality is that I can't really be an effective listener for God when I still haven't heard him enough to remove me from the darkness into the marvelous light. Into the marvelous light. Okay, you want to read the same scripture from the voice? The voice translation says, Because although you were once the personification of darkness, wow. you are now light in the Lord. So act like children of the light. The person what does that word mean? Personification. You are the personification of this darkness. What does that mean? Come get the mic. You the mic runner yourself. The personification. I guess you're like the, the as, as a person you are the definition. I, that's the best way I can say it I guess. Yeah, you are yeah. the definition yeah. Yeah. You're the of yeah. darkness. Yeah. Wow. You're the they said the image. Yeah. You are the image yeah. of darkness. Uh, darkness in human form. 
darkness. Wow, you are darkness in human form, my Lord. So, so the the voice said the voice translation said that you are the definition of darkness, or you were. You were the definition of darkness. Now, it's easy for us to see certain people, you know, they're the definition of darkness. And I and don't call no names out. I know one name everybody won't call out. But, you know, they, they want to call him the Antichrist and all that. But in God's eyes, you're no different than him. Can you, can you deal with that? Which means I need to do what? Huh? Work on me? Oh, let's pray. Change. So sometimes, sometimes we be in here, and I try to, we try to sing songs and, and bring the worship, because the worship is when we all participate. Try to sing songs to get you to stir up change in your own heart. And sometimes I'll say, stand, come on. Is it because I need you to stand? trying to help you. I'm trying to help you motivate change. But if you're at a party and they go playing the Cupid Shuffle, yeah. ain't nobody got to tell you to get up. I, tell me, what's the difference though? What's the difference? Why is that? Why is that that way? Because this is, a, this is just a day for us to get, to get a little bit further down the road. Why, why is it that way? Come on, Mike. Stand up, Mike, and be ready. You go. You on first? Come on. Yeah, yeah, I go. Uh, because uh, because that's darkness, and and uh, we used to darkness, but we ain't used to light. Okay, we used to darkness. Stay on this side, Josh. You on this side of the room? You got this side of the room. Uh, come on, come on now. I ain't gonna go no further till y'all give me some feedback. He said we used to darkness. It's comfortable. It's we're comfortable there. Comfortable there. Which, which, so then the opposite happens here. You're not comfortable right. here. Right. Okay. All right. Behind you, Josh. Did I have somebody on the side of the room? That's your hand. Uh, we don't have to learn how to participate in darkness. We so don't have to learn how to participate so in darkness. So we can participate when the music comes on. But in worship, our hearts have to be taught if oh they're transformed God. how to worship. You're helping me. Y'all help, help. Not just you. Y'all helping me. We have to be taught. We have to be trained. There has to be some teaching. So that's why I had to tell y'all to stand up. I get it now. How can you if you don't know who to trust? If oh you haven't Lord. been introduced to the one, if you haven't heard. <laughs> I don't like her. I don't like oh, her. Oh, I'm dog. sorry. <laughs> well, it dawned on me when Summer said hey, you man, have to right. learn. And then we talk about how you don't have to learn because we were born and shaped in iniquity and this and that and the other. And so we were born into this darkness. Amen. It's a part of us. We're the image of darkness. But then to be something else, to change, it has to be something that gives you the instinct to change. Amen. If you haven't heard him or nobody is doing like they were doing in the Bible, there's a man from Galilee and you got to come hear this man, this and that. And if you had, if people around you are nobody knows or you haven't heard of him then how are you going to trust or want what nobody else around you has i was uh i was looking watching at the party last at the birthday party qualify <laughs> birthday party at the birthday party last night and uh it was a young man there and he was showing them how to do one of them slides i don't know which one it was they were they were doing some kind of little thing and, 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 you know, different ones came to be what? Trained. I'm just following what she said. But do we come to church to be trained? And they stood up on their own to go be trained. He didn't, he didn't call and say, hey, anybody want to learn how to do this? He was there doing it by himself. And now all of a sudden I saw somebody stand behind him and go to. And then I saw somebody else. Get on the other side, and before you know it, it's about five or ten of them standing there watching him learning. See, so it's just a little bit more than just the fact that we don't know. There's something else going on 
that, that caused us to stay seated. Come on. Yeah, I think I, what, what I was thinking was already kind of said just in that regard. That it's kind of even deeper than just that, like, we don't have anybody who's – but maybe it goes hand in hand. Because, like, if you don't see anybody, then, like, you may, may not even have, like, a desire. Because <laughs> I think, like, that's the, probably the most – most important thing, right? If you if yes. you if you're okay, if what your life looks like, then sure. like how would sure. you sure. want to change? Sure. To sure. A lot of people just, stay sitting yeah. down. Yeah. Right. A lot of people were okay. Um, I'll even say, uh, I'll even go as far as to say, you know, for some of us, it isn't that we haven't seen it, you know, but sometimes it's fear, you know, you don't know if. Uh, I'll say, you know, I've been to some churches where it's like, you know, we don't do this, you know, versus I've go to some churches and, you know, everybody got the Holy Ghost, everybody running around. <laughs> so it's like you never know, I guess, what situation you're, you're in because okay. it's like, I mean, uh, I know even me and you have talked about it um, where it's like you go different places and you have to, I guess, kind of – realize that you know not everybody worships like we worship you know okay. Okay. not everybody knows i guess what we know to the depth that we know you know so um i'll say you know fear for even some of us believers kicks in where it's like you know you're sitting there and you're like nobody else standing up for worship can i but i mean i'm i know me personally it's past that point point where it's like even if you don't stand up, I, I'm going to do what I got to do, you know, because I got to get what I got to get, you know. See, because you are a real worshiper, right? A real dancer going to stand up and dance by itself, right? A real person who, who that's them, that's gonna, they're going to they're gonna give their own, they're going to go do what they, what they want to do. Come on. Flip the, flip the script. Okay, flip the script. There we go. Okay. When you're old, sometimes you can't stand up for long periods of time. Sometimes I stand and get tired. I have to sit a hold on to the chair. However, or sitting, I'm still wishing, worshiping the Lord in my heart. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Like I said, some people didn't, that, even, at the, even at the party, some folk didn't stand. So everybody, everybody didn't see a need to do that. But my, my point, to your point, is that, you know, I always try to say if you're able, right? You, only him and you know if you're able, right? And, if, and only him and you know that if you was at the party, you still wouldn't stand up, right? You still wouldn't dance. If you was at the football game, you still wouldn't stand. See, but, but my question is to the ones who would stand at the football game but won't stand here. It ain't really to the people that you can't stand wherever you at. I'm talking about to the ones who won't stand if the president come in. The president come in, you ain't going to stand either. Right? The one you like, Obama. Okay? I know you ain't, you ain't going to want to stand for the, some, some of the others. Now, uh, you know. Now, <laughs> so, so, so the question really is to the ones who you know that there's something that is not translating between the two realities. Yes. Question. We haven't made it important as everything else is important in our life. We kids born, we tell them, you got to go to school, you got to get an education, it's important, you know. Sometimes we bring kids to church and stuff, and we bring the church out of a tradition or out of routine. But we don't get in the car and say, now you make sure you pay attention because they're telling you something that's important. This is worth your life. You know, we, we don't, we haven't been trained or taught or whatever words you want to use to go in that space to say, this is important. Mm. We hear it, mm. and we hear people say that, this is, we come here to make sure that we're going to live with Jesus forever, but nobody has really shown them Jesus forever or whatever, you know? Um, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Gotcha. 
what is important? That's the question. We know that something about this is important. We wouldn't be here, right? right. But what is important? And this is, this is um, thank you. Thank you for your comment. Because this, this is the, the real issue for me as I'm approaching this subject of listening, as I'm approaching this subject of the realities that we, that we, the reality that we live in, is the question is what about it is important? Even going back to Mother Jackie, she said, well, I don't do it because of this. So the question is not do we do it, but what about it is important? Why did I, why did I use an example of standing during worship, right? Why did I use that example? I use that example because I was saying that worship is a place where, where we all get to participate, right? right? Everybody don't get to come up here. Now, in this church, if you be around long enough, you probably will come up here. <laughs> if ain't nothing but to read the response to reading, amen? amen. You're going to do something around here. <laughs> but, but, Worship is the part where we all get to participate. And so for me, it's the place where if I came here with an understanding of what is important, then my t participation here is only going to be changed if I can't do it. Right? I'm not going to be saying, well, I ain't going to stand up this time for any other reason than I can't. I just, I don't, I can't. My legs won't let me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it sitting down today. Sometimes I'm tired. Sometimes my leg, I've gotten older, and I know what y'all mean when you say your legs hurt. I didn't even know I had legs. You understand? But I remember when I had, broke, when I had knee surgery. I stood the whole serve. You know why? I stood the whole serve because I said, God, I'm so glad that I made it through that surgery. I began to realize my legs was, wasn't a guarantee. I might not be able to stand. Well, I can. Get what I'm gonna do. That's just for me, cause that's why I get to participate. I wasn't a the pastor then. I wasn't up all the time. I was only up certain all every now and then, and so my my chance to participate was there. But even then, I didn't understand what was important. It was just a religious zeal that I was standing for. Okay, it was a physical, fleshly, religious zeal for which I did that, and I had disdain for people who didn't do it. Amen. If I be honest with you, I looked at people who didn't do it, and I said, Some, what's wrong with them? But now, everything I do, I do it because I know what's important. What's important? Mother Mildred. Huh? Amen. Make sure the mic on when y'all give it to him now. Uh, no. no. Okay. Turn it right back off. <laughs> she said. She said that God is important. He is the center. He is the center. Right now. So we're just talking about. This issue of, of uh, the heart. And so, this is the man we want to be, or God wants us to be. This is the man that we were. We were darkness. And we said that one thing had to change first. What was the thing that had to change first? Huh? All oh, right. The heart. And, 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 and what about the heart? Had to get Mr. Self out of the heart. Now, in, once, once Mr. Self is no longer in the heart, then Mother said God can become the center. What is the heart of a watermelon? Huh? She said the belly. <laughs> What's the, what, the sweetest part? 
It's the what, though? The center. That's what I'm looking for. The center. <laughs> the sugary part is the core, the center. Now, we, we, look, I, I'm not, look, we're using some words. See, mother said, mother said, the, mo, the what is important, and I, 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 I trust her to give me the right answer. She said, what is important is that God is the center. Okay? Now, now, yeah, it's the sweetest part, but the real issue is that it is the what? The center. See, when you're talking about the spiritual heart, we don't really know where it's located. People say it's located in the belly because they said the, 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 the spirit of the Lord is, uh, the, the spirit of the Lord is, the spirit, wait a minute. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord and searches all the inward parts of the belly. So we say, well, the spirit is in the belly. Okay, if it is, it is. But what I do know is that the heart of man is the center of man, the core. Somebody say the core. When you do an exercise, you get you a physical trainer, he's going to tell you got to work on your what? Core. Your core is your center. From it, all your strength are alive. If you let your belly get big like me, then get what happened to your core? It's weak. Amen? Strength you used to have, your arms still should be strong, but because your core is weak, you don't have the strength that you used to have. Amen? Amen. Now, so at the end of the day, What's going to make you worship a certain way, talk a certain way, walk a certain way, live a certain way, is this issue of the what? Heart, which is the center or the core of man. So everything starts with you getting a handle on this core, this core of your life. If you don't get a handle on this core, then God will not be able to have a handle on your life. So for us, when the word of God comes into the heart, into this issue of the core, it first dislodges Mr. Self. He dislodges the old nature, the human nature, the hum this, all this. He dislodges it with his word. He says, if any man will come after me, let him what? Deny himself. Luke 9, 23. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. And so, and then he can take up his cross, crucifying the old life, and then what? Follow me. Now, so, so the first thing that must happen, so when the word comes, we said it's the word. It comes through hearing. The hearing that comes, if it does not first dislodge Mr. Self. I'm making a point here now. If it does not first dislodge Mr. Self and the word continues to come and Mr. Self is still seated at the center of your life, all that word is like throwing T-bone steaks to dogs. They're going to devour it up. Now, if you had to throw them or some, bologna, uh, or some rotten meat, they devour it too. It don't make no difference. It's, no, it's, the, it's not going to amount to anything in your life. When the word of God comes, if Mr. Self is the one that receives it, he's going to say, oh, so you want to be religious? Then we're going to be the, the one that do the most. We're going to stand up the most, Charles. You're going to stand the most. You're going you're gonna to go the most. You're going to uh, 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 show up the most. You're going to do all this because you're the best out of this whole group of people in here. You're going to always, you're going to be to say, I never miss church. I teach the kid. I pay my tithe. I help in the kitchen. I mop the floor. I clean the toilets. I cut the grass. Huh? Buy my pastor a suit. Send him on vacation. Did I miss anything? <laughs> Not much, huh? I'm going to be with him, too. I'm going to be with him more than anybody else. But the problem is, all of that is done through the power of Mr. Self.
And Mr. Self going to always take the glory for who? Yeah. Self. All the glory that should have went to God. Oh, my God. I know y'all don't like me right now. All the glory, but I'm just talking about me, so y'all can't get too mad at me. I'm just talking about me. All the glory that should have went to God went to who? Mr. Self. All the stuff. Now, folks, now, did everybody, how many people dislike me? Nobody. Everybody like Pastor Charles because Pastor Charles is an ideal, uh, you know, he's the model of a Christian. And God said he's still where? Oh, I'm, I'm talking real good now. Because until Mr. Self is dethroned, everything you're doing, you're doing it for who? Because Mr. Self don't do nothing for nobody but who? He make it look like he's doing it for somebody else, but it's always, always, always going to be for self. I had a young boy here when we first started learning about himself. I'll never forget it. I wish I remember his name. I don't remember his name, but I remember what he said. I said, well, what do y'all think about himself? Everybody said something. The little boy said, here, I'm going to say something. He said, self going to always be selfish. <laughs> I'll never forget it. <laughs> that been probably, how long, eight years ago or longer. He said it sitting right here. He said, self going to always be selfish. And so as long as this self nature is there, Jesus can't do anything. So he said, if any man will come after me, hmm, let him what? You remember, that's right after he told, told Peter, get behind me. Get behind me, saying, you're not thinking about the things of God. You're thinking about the things that pertain to men. And so true discipleship, has to begin with a word that comes to first dislodge Mr. Self, Mr. Flesh, human nature, sin nature, whatever you want to call him, off the throne of your heart so there's a place for God in your heart. Amen? Amen. Now, 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 I'm ready, to, I'm ready to wrap up. I'm, I'm past my time. But I got to, I got to, we can't leave this, though, because this deal just only stirred up stuff. And it's, and it's stirring up questions. So the question that you have is this. What do I do, though, about me? Now, some of you know this. We've been doing this a long time. But some of you haven't. So I want to know, what do you think? What do you do? What do I do about me, though? What about all my dreams? What are all my aspirations? What about all the things that I've been? What about what I am to other people? What happens to that? It does what, Jerry? It goes away? Okay. He said it goes away. Is that all right, though? Uh, I see if you can, uh, you get to, when you get selfish out the way, which I had to, it give God room to bless you. You know, you always think you're doing it yourself, doing it yourself. But when you get yourself out the way and give him the glory for, thank you, Jesus, man, I got that screw loose. Or, thank you, Jesus, for this. And, you know, it gives, it gives room okay. for him to bless you so you can see that what you was doing was mediocre to what he's doing. Okay. He said, he said, he said, he said, starts with giving God glory in everything you do. That's a start place. It starts by giving him the credit for everything you do. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. It has to go uh, to the cross. That self has to be okay. baptized into the same death that Jesus died uh, by faith. So by us seeing that that's where it went, that's where it has to go, or else it won't, it has no end. Okay, let's come back to that. She said, she said, ultimately, all of that that was me has to go to the cross. But now, but, but I want to start before that because it's still some folks who don't, un, they don't see that yet. So, so what about, what if I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm just, just, this is new to me. It, it, you won't have any real change until you see or accept that those things, like someone was saying, are they're, they're of you and self and not of God. What God has for you, he's going to tell you, you follow, you listen to, to his direction. But it's until that acceptance that these things that I thought that I wanted are things that I've been working for or going for. They amount to nothing in the end. So they need to be crucified and gotten rid of. It's mm. the, the acceptance of of what mm. your reality is. Mm. 
All right, so she says we got to, first, it's got to, I got to, <laughs> I got to understand what is important and have clarity. She said we got to have clarity about what's really important, what's really real. Uh, what's my, I'll get it. Okay. What, hold on, hold on. Hold on. What, about what's really real, okay? So this issue that we're talking about then of me relinquishing myself, I will not do it until I realize that what I've been doing is not really amounting to anything real. It's really not. It seems like it is. It's only an imposter. It's a counterfeit. It's a knockoff. Okay, it's a knockoff. It, <laughs> it, it, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 for, for a while, people thought I was doing something until they got up close and they said, "Oh, that's a knockoff." So, so, and, and but, but I got a first, you know, because I, I wasn't even thinking about it. I, I, I said, "Man, look at my bag, knife." And the boy said, "No, well, my mother, now mother man first said uh, it's a knockoff because she's a person that knows quality things." So she said, "No, that's a knockoff, Pastor. Come on now, get with it." So, <laughs> so, 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 but now I gotta accept that my bag is a what? A knockoff. So, so she said, first there has to come clarity that the life. Okay, he's first, then you. Yeah. All right. The, 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 I gotta accept that the life that I have been living, like the little girl in the story that you might have, may or may not have heard, that this woman wasn't my mother, and everything had been a lie, everything. And until I accept that, I won't be able to hear the truth. So first, gotta. Clarity got to come. A moment of clarity. Um, just going back to what you were saying about what happened to your dreams and your gifts, your dreams and your gifts don't go out the door. You seek Christ first, and once you seek Christ, then once he becomes the center of your heart, you now can use those gifts for his kingdom and for his glory. You know, that's something I just wanted to speak on that because that's something I've been asking God myself. I'm like, okay, now I got all the these, these dreams. I got all these these visions. What I do with them now? Because at first I was using them for the world. I was walking in darkness at first. Now Christ has become the forefront. I don't have the mind, same mindset that I had before. But now God says to me that you can still use those dreams and gifts. You will now use them for the kingdom of God. And now God will get the glory out of them instead of you getting the glory out of them. All right. He's, everything he said, I'm going to just shift what he said a little bit. He said, I can use them. But if, if, but, 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 but who's now living? See, see, we didn't get that far yet, though. So that's why I want to be careful how far we try to take folks in this conversation. Because we didn't go that far. We didn't go to Galatians 2.20, which said it's no longer who? I that live, but Christ. But see, now, ultimately, we got to get to that point. But it said indirectly when he says, any man who come after me must deny himself take up his cross. So if I take up my cross, what happened to myself? He died. Mm. But see, we didn't get there yet. So, so I, I don't want to carry you too fast, but I do want you to understand that where we're headed, he said, there's hope because God can and possibly will use some of those things for his glory. But he'll be the one using it. That's the, the catch, is that he'll be the one using it, not me. Amen. All right, now, Sister Jamir O. So, we need, we need a reality check. Are you screening it too hard? Or? <laughs> oh, we need a reality We need another mic. Now, what we need is another mic. Hold on. <laughs> get that mic. Get that other mic from, from, from Summer. Summer got another mic. Come on, quick, quick, quick now. Quick, quick, quick. We got to move on. We got chicken heat. Okay, we need a reality check. The reason why I said we need a re reality check is um, I can speak for myself. Last night, even at the party, there were some things that were supposed to go on because, of course, my children planned all this, and it was a surprise. And what they knew, it was a surprise, but they didn't know I knew about the surprise. Oh, well, they knew you knew. So <laughs> I didn't know about the surprise the whole time. But maybe about two weeks ago, things started clicking. clicking. But even with that, there was something that was supposed to happen last night. Um, somebody was supposed to get up and basically give all my accolades and this and that and the other. And I'm glad that did not happen. Because even between last night at the end and this morning when I came in, my 
my unction was to testify about how those last 50 years were my 50 years. Mm. But I realized that these next 50 years mm. are all his 50 years. My, my. And regardless to the accolades I had in the past, he gave me talents and skills, and I, but I was using them. Amen. When I went to college, I did this, I did that, I did this, you know? Sure. But at this time now, I understand that it's no longer I that is him. Because now at this point, if I go to another school or if I do anything else, it's because he sent me there. It's not, uh, I'm going here. It's, this is my mission. Amen. You know, even with Amen. teaching at Holy Family, we talked about that before. Amen that I knew I was there because that was where he placed me. And so even though there were doors opening to go to other places and I could have done other things, I had to sit in the place where he placed me because that was my purpose now. And I understand that now a lot more than I did before because I did not understand that. I had to understand that if I'm driving down the street and he said, make a left turn, you make the left turn. You don't well, God, why am I going this way? And this and then the other is, okay, I made the left turn because there's something that he wants me to see out here. And so I'm hearing clearly or clearer so that when I make the turn, I'm not going against his will and making it a longer street. I'm in his will. So when I, when I turn, I'm looking for where yes. he sent yes. me to go. Yes. You know, yes. that's how the disciples were back in the day. They actually, when he sent them, they went in looking for what he said. What he said. So, see, see, yeah. so, so, so which, which brings us back to the issue of listening. So, so that thing is becomes that he becomes the center, we said, and he becomes what's important. And when you go into this new season of life, you know without a shadow of a doubt that this is not somewhere I've been before. And you know I can't make it unless I hear from him. If you think and if, you, if you're waking up every day deciding what you're going to do, then you hadn't got there yet. If every time somebody asks you a question about what you'll do, you already know what you'll do, you hadn't got there yet. Only when you get to the point to where you say, I don't know, I must ask the Lord. Then you are somebody who being led by him daily. You're following him. How can I say I'm following him, but I know where I'm going? Isaac said, hey, follow me, man. I said, where are we going? He said, follow me. And then I take off and get in front of him. Am I following him? Even if I'm riding beside him, am I following him? If I'm riding beside him, I'm saying that I don't know that he finna what? Turn off. Because if he turn off, I'm lost. Am I right? Because I was what? Following him. So, so there's an issue for listening in the light that's different than that in the darkness. In the darkness, I'm listening for any voice. Every, everything that's talking is a consideration for my decisions. But when I'm walking in the light, there's only one voice. And the, on the Mount of Transf Transfiguration, God, they, was, they saw Moses, they saw Elijah, they saw Jesus lit up and, and, and all illuminated. And then God, he, he covered up Moses. He covered up Elijah. He said, this is my son. Hear him. So, so at the end of the day, there's only one voice. Somebody said there's one voice. When you're walking in the light, there's one voice. Why? Because you're walking by what? Faith. Not by what? Because faith has become my sight. So now, if I'm walking with the Lord in this scenario, in the light, then I got to know what's important because if I don't, then I'm going to take my attention off Jesus because there's going to be so, so many distractions. But for me, my eyes are closed. They said, didn't you see that? No. What are you talking about? <laughs> Pastor, didn't you see them taking their head two bags full of cakes and stuff and they took it out of the church? I didn't see it. Even if I saw it, I didn't see it. Unless he tell me to see it, I only see what he told me to see. He told me, look, there's a person there who's walking in darkness. I want you to pray for him. But for the person that's in the darkness already, 
And you need to call the police. You need to tell them they can't come up here no more. You got so many suggestions, so many rules. And you taking home as much stuff as they is just over a long period of time. <laughs> you just think nobody don't see you. But the thing about it is, that's the flesh. The flesh wants to put people in jail for the same thing they're doing. Because it's selfish. I know why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm, 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 I deserve something. I'm justified what I'm doing. But when I'm walking with him, this is my last thing. I just, I'm just going to reiterate. How can they know who to trust unless somebody who trusts him tells them who to trust? And how can you know how to trust him unless you have learned to trust him? Because faith comes by hearing. He said, unless Christ is being preached, there's nothing to listen to. So if I'm up here talking to you about anything other than Christ, and what we've been talking about today is how to walk genuinely with Christ. And you ain't never had a talk like this in church. Never. Because at the end of the day, I don't care nothing about preaching as they say. I care about you and how you end up in the end. I care about whether or not when God called me, he can say whether or not I did what I could to get you to the point that you can walk with him. Because it's not about you walking with me. It's about you walking with him. So I, have, I get ridiculed. I know folks say, what kind of preacher they let them talk on Sunday? They just be talking in church. I don't know how he do that. But I ain't never had a problem with it. The problem is we ain't talked enough in church. We just nodded our heads, went home, and went right back to living like we were living. But today, you ain't going to be able to do that because you yourself have walked through these scenarios. You yourself have pondered and made your own comments, and you've been able to hear somebody else's comments that would say the same thing that you wanted to say. And all of that so that you might leave here today with a genuine opportunity to say, I think I know what God wants for my life. Amen? Somebody says about listening. And see, true listening is a two-way street. Not only do we do, not only do we listen, but we respond. So I'm hearing God. I'm responding, and now I'm going to ask you to stand on your feet. Let's pray. Because something that you heard today is going to help you walk out what God has for your life. I want you to walk it out. I want you to see it. I want you to be able to to put it go, to go to another level with it. And without fear, because you, the thing that you're fearing, other folks also had the same question. What will I do? How will I do that? How will I move on? What will I do with my, my, my gifts, my talents? What will I do with all the things that I've already been doing? I, I, I had all those same thoughts. Some of the stuff I was doing wasn't even legal. If you was honest, when I first started walking with God, I had stuff, I had stuff going on in my life that wasn't legal, but it was supporting me. Hello, somebody. I've been supported by illegal stuff. And, and, so, and so at the end of the day, I'm saying, Lord, how am I going to make it? Oh, you, my, my, my niece looking at me, you, huh? She thought I, she, my, my niece think I fell out of him. <laughs> but see, these things that some folk wouldn't even consider illegal, right? But once you get in the Lord, he show you, that ain't right. You shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, what are you doing still getting unemployment and you, and you, and you working? <laughs> uh, that kind of stuff. All of that kind of stuff God starts showing you, but he don't show it all to you at once. Am I right about it? Ain't he good? Ain't he all right? He'll let you go a year sometime, two years. You've been like, Lord, we walking, we fine. He said, now let me ask you something. <laughs> How long are you going to keep on doing this here? Because he's a merciful God. But when he does, are you listening? Amen? I stand here today telling you who you can trust. Why? Because I trusted in myself. Amen? You can trust him with your situation, your circumstance, all the stuff that you got going on in your life, the stuff that you're afraid if you let it go, what will you have? You will have him. He told Abraham, fear not. I'm your shield, and I'm your exceeding great reward. I am. See, see, when he said, I am your reward, then guess what? You got something. You didn't have nothing no way. What you gave up wasn't nothing. It was going to crumble. It was going to crush. Somebody was going to steal it. 
Somebody's going to break in and hold you at night point and take it from you. But what they cannot take from you is me. Amen? Amen. So glory be to God that he now will give you himself. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. First, I want you just to pray. I want you just to take a moment. Ask God to, to, to help you um, to walk by faith and not by sight. Ask him to help you. To, if, you, if you still hadn't removed Mr. Self, ask him to help you remove Mr. Self from his throne. If you have removed Mr. Self, ask God to allow you to, to receive strength as he becomes the Lord of your life. Lord, we just thank you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now repeat after me. Dear Lord, I thank you, Lord. Walking with you is a straight line. I've deviated in the past, taken detours, thought I was taking a shortcut, but you brought me back to the clear path. Thank you, Jesus. Open my eyes. Allow me to see with eyes of faith, which means I hear you, and then I see what you're saying. Lord, I thank you that my eyes of my understanding are enlightened, that I might receive from you instruction for a successful life in Christ. Lord, I thank you. It'll be good for my children and my children's children. You will keep them in all their ways, blessing them and drawing them also into yourself. I thank you, Lord, for my family, my loved ones, my friends, my associates, and my neighbors, that my life will be one that they can look to to find out who they can trust. Lord, let me trust you more and more every day. Thank you, Lord God, for your grace. Father, we thank you right now for everything you're doing in each and every life here, Father God, that we're asking for simple things. You said if we ask anything according to your will, that you hear us. And if you hear us, we have the petition that we ask. So we believe right now, Father God, that you're doing something supernatural, something faithful in our lives. And, Father God, we believe right now that everything, Lord God, that we need will be provided. Father God, I thank you, Lord, there are some who are not here. Father God, let this message, uh, this, this, this discussion, Lord, let it be heard by those who need to hear it. Father God, I thank you right now, Lord God, for those who are not here because of different circumstances that are working against them. Father God, would you move up against those circumstances? Help them, Lord God, to overcome and all the things that they're, the challenges that they're going through. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that even as we prepare, Lord God, for the fellowship over this uh, time of... Uh, of uh, food and time of uh, just, just getting together to enjoy one another. Father God, let it be a wonderful time. And then, Father God, let us, Father, continue to grow as we talk about being born again. Father God, we thank you right now, Lord God, that you will help us, Lord God, in all your ways. We acknowledge you. Direct our path. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. All right. Um,
Um, I'm going to need some help from all the fellas. Help me.